Well, good afternoon, everyone. I, I do want to thank you for making the time just to learn about your university. This is the third State of the University address that I've given, and I'm very proud to tell you that Missouri s and has never been in a better position to move forward in a focused and determined manner. So today you will hear a lot about our strategic plan. And I would like to begin with a video from the University of Missouri System President Tim Wolf about our strategic planning progress. And as you will see in this video, the president is very impressed with what we've been able to do on this campus. And as I will share with you briefly, it is already paying off in a big way. So let's roll the video. Since the summer of 2012, the Missouri s and community has worked diligently to create and implement a strategic plan that is reflective of both the values and the unique attributes that define this great university. I want to express my appreciation for those who have engaged in the process and specifically thank Chancellor Schrader, Provost Kent Ray, and Dr. James Drawmeyer for their leadership. The strategic planning process at s and has involved hundreds of students, faculty, staff, alumni, employers, donors, and research partners. This inclusive and open approach led to a rich conversation and substantial involvement to complete a strategic plan that will guide the campus in its operations and investments over the next five to seven years. The fiscal year 2014 budget is the first budget firmly grounded in the strategic planning process with an investment of approximately 74 million system-wide towards strategic priorities. This investment will allow our campuses to retain or achieve best-in-class status in defined areas. For s and that means providing a top return on investment among public research universities to students, employers, research partners, and donors. Again, I thank the Missouri s and community for working to shape this plan. I'm confident that it will guide the efforts of the campus as we work collectively to support and enhance its position as a leading technological research university. So I think it deserves a round of applause. Certainly, that's a great testament to what we've accomplished. And um, to everyone who's had a role to play in this plan, I really say thank you. So thanks to the input of many people in this room, we now have a strategic plan that has been ratified by the University of Missouri System Board of Curators and a plan that will serve as our compass as we move forward. So given the challenges, as we, that we face as a university, it is imperative that every dollar that we spend, every hire, and every decision is made in a strategic way. We really don't have the luxury of doing it any other way. Our hundreds of faculty and staff members now have one united strategy. And so I want to take just a moment to review it with you. So I want you to think of this as our elevator speech. So whenever you get that chance, just to tell people where we're going and how we're going to get there. And you can also find this in, in the handy little pocket cards uh, that are being passed around the room. Uh, this, this is so you don't forget. So it says that by 2020, which is our 150th year as a university, we will provide a top return on investment among public research universities to our key customers, our students, our employers, our research partners, and our donors. And we're going to do that by leveraging our unique advantage and providing extraordinary access to renowned expertise, to one-of-a-kind services, and to myriad learning possibilities. So if you're a student here with us today, uh, I expect that s and return on investment for you is probably one of the reasons why you chose to join us on this campus. So this ROI manifests itself in many, many ways. And one example, and for the third year in a row, Payscale has recognized the value that we offer 
by noting that S and T grads enjoy the second highest starting salaries of any university in the Midwest, public or private. And now, I'm also well aware that strategic plans don't always have the best reputation. And so I think the Dilbert cartoon that I just put up pretty much sums it up. So the pointy-haired bo boss, who you really have to love, tells Dilbert, well, I'm putting you on the strategic planning team. And then, of course, he elaborates. It's like work without the satisfaction of accomplishing anything. So at Missouri S&T, I am happy to say we've changed the strategic planning paradigm. And so, at Missouri S&T, <laughs> strategic planning is all about the satisfaction of accomplishing your goals. It's all about the satisfaction of accomplishing our shared goals. So let me assure you that the thousands who've given their input throughout this process have created a viable plan and a plan that will guide our decisions for the next seven years and beyond. And this plan is not merely theoretical. It is practical. It has already changed the way that we've been operating here at S&T and how we are integrating all of the other plans and our resources with the strategic plan in a very focused and deliberate way so that we can ensure success. In fact, the strategic plan is just so important to how we do business that I do expect each of you to familiarize yourself with it, to become familiar with it if you are not already. And I want you to be able to look for those opportunities to apply it just on a daily basis, wherever you may be, in the classroom, in the laboratory, in your department, your office, or the community. And you can view the entire plan in detail at strategicplan.mst.edu. And if you forget where that is, it's on your handy card. Um, this website is going live today. It also provides, in addition to all of the details, uh, which can be quite lengthy, it provides this very high-level view of our strategic planning process. It's an introduction to our strategy and our goals, our vision, our mission and values, for those who just want to know a little more about us, and also to understand where we're going and how we will get there. So the website will help you it will help you as leaders, it will help you as ambassadors of our great institution to communicate our path and our progress. And I will be using the website itself in a number of presentations about our strategic plan over the coming week. So I would ask you just to go and look and see what's there uh, because it's organized and laid things out at a very high level to capture uh, the essence of the plan and then you can dig into the details as needed. So I do encourage you to familiarize ourself, yourself with our shared goals, to think about ways that you can help us continue to meet and exceed the expectations of our six primary customer groups. And remembering those groups is important. Undergraduate students, our research investors, research-based graduate students, the employers of our students, distance and online students, and donors. So it really has taken a village to create this plan. And what I want to do is give a very special thanks to the Strategic Planning Coalition, the Chancellor's Cabinet, and the six customer task force groups. So I'm going to ask you all to stand and be recognized and remain standing. There's three parts to that. So the coalition, the cabinet, and members of the six task force groups. <laughs> St 
stay standing, stay standing, because you're going to have people who join you. I'm going to ask anyone who participated in a targeted brainstorming session, an ideation session, in strategic planning over the past year, and it doesn't matter whether you were looking at customers, it doesn't matter whether you were looking at themes, it doesn't matter whether you were trying to plan what's happening in your department or unit, I'm going to ask you to please stand. So you look around this room and you know that our plan is a plan of the people. So you may be seated and thank you. I would also like to recognize the extraordinary leadership, the organization, the dedication of co-chairs Dr. Jim Drahlmeier and Dr. Kent Ray. And I'm very, very grateful for the support and the assistance of Krista Chambers in the Provost Office and Linda Brammel from my office. So Jim, Kent, Krista, and Linda, will you please come forward and accept small tokens of my appreciation. And So while you're coming forward, um, I'm going to ruin the surprise a little bit because I'm going to tell you what I'm giving each of you. I'm giving each of you a replica of a Lewis and Clark compass. And I think that that's very, very fitting because you have helped S&T set our direction. And you will also find a framed copy of the revised Dilbert cartoon. And, you know, as intense, as important as this process has been, I think it's, it's very important for us just to step back, take a break now and then, play hard as well as work hard. Um, and, and also I think it's important to laugh at ourselves because it, it really is pretty funny. have done it without you. Thank you. So today I'm going to share with you where the university stands and where we intend to go over the next several years. I want to go ahead and start with some wonderful news. Because I've just received word that for the first time in our history, we've surged to more than 8,000 students. And that's nearly 6% growth from last year. I think it's important to point out that we're not just bigger, we're better. What I have up on the slide are a number of uh, record-breaking enrollment statistics and the increases from last year. Our student body is more diverse in terms of gender and ethnicity. We're seeing growth in key areas like graduate and distance students. And we continue to enroll first-time freshmen with impeccable academic credentials. So our average ACT scores for incoming freshmen have been inching up and they continue to climb from 27.91 last year to 27.95. The student body is becoming more and more aligned with those student profiles that we've imagined for the year 2020 and which have been really outlined by our strategic plan. So we're well on our way uh, and we have realized some immediate success. At the time when many universities throughout the nation and our state are experiencing declining enrollment, we've really bucked the trend. And I'm pleased to report that our growth isn't just due to the number of freshmen that we've brought in. In fact, um, we have had 
bigger freshman classes in previous years. Our total enrollment reflects, as you can see, a record increase in transfer students of 14%. And that, in addition to our strong retention rate, means that more of our students are getting to the graduation finish line. And that's good news. We're helping students like Ashley Kesterer. So Ashley, would you stand? So in addition to being our student body president, Ashley is on track to graduate with a double major in business and economics in less than four years. And I want to let you in on a secret. She did not come here with any college credits. So Ashley, I do want to thank you for your leadership and also congratulate you on your academic achievement. So we are improving retention because of people like Rachel Morris from our Office of Undergraduate Studies. Rachel, where are you? Great. So Rachel helped organize um, this year's Hit the Ground Running program for incoming freshmen. And this year, we realized more than a 25% increase in participation over last year. And in addition, our students were able to test out of introductory math courses at a higher rate than previous years with the help from our pro workshop. So I want to turn for a moment and talk a little bit about our growth in research and technology transfer. We are the only campus in the system to have met and exceeded our goal for net grants and contracts expenditures in what you can, could consider as a very, very challenging funding environment. We realized a 5% increase over last year. We also have seen a nearly 14% increase in the number of patents filed, and we more than doubled the number of our license and option agreements. So it's important to note that these strides do not happen by accident. They're focused actions. They're called for in our strategic plan, combined with metrics to measure it advance, advancement. They happen through hard work. They happen through tenacity. They happen through innovation. And all of our faculty and staff really are to be commended for helping our students be successful. So Rachel and faculty and staff, thank you so much for your dedication. So you can really tell that good things are happening to Missouri S&T just by walking around our campus. And I do want to shout out to our tremendous landscaping crew because they create such a beautiful and welcoming environment. And as you've no doubt noticed, I suspect, our geothermal project is well underway and we are on schedule for completion the, this next year. So when complete, you know that it will be one of the most comprehensive geothermal projects on any college campus across this country. So the photo that we have up here is what State Street looked like last week. And this is right outside of Bertelsmeyer Hall. And Bertelsmeyer Hall, you may know, is where one of the, the geothermal plants will be housed. And you may have heard by now that the University of Missouri System Board of Curators in June approved adding a fourth geothermal plant to cover Gail Bolman and the multi-purpose building. <laughs> so just imagine, just imagine what career fairs and commencements are going to be like. So this addition I think is a great example of a business innovation, and that's why I want to highlight it for you. Partnering together across the university, we will fund this new development without adding to our debt burden. And as further evidence of fostering innovation, the project lead 
uh, in the, on this fourth plant is a graduate of Missouri S&T. And he has created an approach that will not only save us $1.6 million, but it will also leave all of our students with improved athletic and recreational facilities. That's just tremendous. Additionally, Bertelsmeyer Hall is well on its way to its expected completion date in May. Of course, that building will house our Department of Chemical and Biochemical Engineering and will provide state-of-the-art research labs as well as some much-needed classroom space. We expect completion in May. There'll be a lot of moving going on over the summer, and we should be up and running by fall of 14. With all this growth, I know there are significant challenges. And if you're a faculty member, then you already understand all too well that too many of our faculty are stretched thin. You realize, as I do, that faculty time is our most precious resource. And if Missouri S&T is to retain its reputation for renowned faculty who are also accessible, we must invest in the faculty. And there is no other facet of our strategic plan that takes a higher priority than this. As outlined by the plan, in 2020, by 2020, we will add 100 new faculty members. And we're going to do this in a very strategic way, in four best-in-class areas, and also in support of the strategic plan, and in recognizing those academic departments for their performance and um, the way they are helping move the whole campus closer to achieving its goals. So I'm very pleased to share with you that we recently received word that we'll be able to make impressive strides toward this ambitious goal already this year. So President Wolf has approved our $2.57 million request to help fund 22 new faculty positions. And s and is committed to funding 11 additional faculty positions, and we will begin an aggressive hiring uh, beginning this fall. In two years' time, we expect to be one-third of our way to the goal of 100 new faculty. But that's not all. Because in addition, President Wolf, with support from the curators, has approved our two other requests in full to expand the use of technology to enhance student learning and high enrollment uh, foundational courses, and also to invest a million dollars from the state, uh, a half a million dollars from the state, matched by another half a million dollars that's raised from non-appropriated funds, so that's gifts and grants. And we're going to use these to improve our instructional labs, our learning laboratories. So it's really important to note that the strategic funding, the strategic initiative funding is historic. So President Wolf has sent a clear message with the unprecedented funding of these requests. So we got what we asked for, right? Gone are the days when a S&T campus is held to a funding percentage that does not recognize performance or value. So our success is a direct result of our clear and bold vision, our aggressive goals and actions, and the challenging metrics of performance. We demonstrated in no uncertain terms that we know where we are going, we know how we will get there, and we know that we are all integral in the plan's success. So together, we created that focused, bold, but actionable plan and we prioritized, we made the difficult decisions, and trade-offs. But there's a catch, right? In return for the unprecedented campus and system investment in the S&T strategic plan and in this campus, I need each one of you to be a spokesperson for it. 
we need each of you to be knowledgeable and engaged in it. We need all the units and departments to be moving in the same direction as the plan. And we need to continue to make those hard decisions. We need to continue to prioritize because we can't do everything. And we need to focus on rising to the challenge through the S&T strategy for success. So with the investment comes an obligation, an obligation in implementing the dynamic strategic plan. So I'm not going to go over the strategic plan with you in detail, which I'm sure makes you feel pretty good. Um, but I want just to remind you, and you have Cliff Notes version right here, um, that there are four themes in our plan. That is to develop and inspire creative thinkers and leaders for lifelong success. To enhance our reputation and raise visibility. To achieve sustainable growth so that we can ensure best return on investment. And to increase and facilitate that meaningful access to and the interaction with our renowned faculty and staff and services. So again, I hope that this pocket card and the Cliff Note versions uh, will be helpful to you as you help spread the word about our plan. None of these things can happen without investing in our faculty, in our staff, um, and in our students. And, and I think we need to invest in the good work of our faculty members, like Dr. Richard Dawes who earlier this year received an early career award from the Department of Energy. And doctors Yu Sun Hall and Sriram Shalupan, both of whom received the National Science Foundation's most prestigious award for young faculty members earlier this year. So these faculty, they exemplify the role of the teacher scholar. And they do that through outstanding research excellent teaching, and the integration of education and research and application, which, of course, is within the context of S&T's updated mission. We need more people like Sriram and Richard and Yusan, who are focused in helping S&T reach its goals. So professors, I'm going to ask you to please stand and be recognized. So as you can see, the state of the university is very strong, but that's not to say that it can't become stronger. And so in the coming weeks, the provost and I will be sharing with you some structural changes that are tied directly to the strategic plan and that will help our university achieve that best-in-class status. I'm going to ask you to watch the e-connections. We will hold some open forums this week and next along uh, as a way to complement some of the meetings that we've set up with key groups. So as your chancellor, I will continue to advocate for you, for our students, for our faculty, and for our staff. And I will continue to help our congressional delegation understand why it's crucial to be investing in technological research universities like ours. And I will continue to make sure that S&T is a valued partner in the University of Missouri system. I will continue to rely on you for advice, for help as we move forward. It really is an honor to be your chancellor, and I do Truly, truly appreciate your support as we continue this trajectory of strength and vitality. So before I take any questions, I want to remind you of a few opportunities. There's an opening social event this evening at 6 p.m. Uh, outside of the Havener Center uh, for our Research Technology Day. And the conference continues tomorrow morning at the Havener Center. And, and this event is really all about helping you move your research forward. 
And it doesn't have, uh, make any difference what your discipline is. We also will be having special guests, President Tim Wolf and our new Executive Vice President, Hank Foley, on campus. And so you don't want to miss that opportunity to network and to get connected to the resources that can bring your work to the next level and, you know, have that conversation with President Wolf or Vice President uh, Foley. Um, I'd love to have a very strong S&T showing. So if there are any questions, I would be happy to take them. Yes. Could you speak more specifically to the areas that are getting new faculty hired? So in terms of the faculty hiring, there is actually out, uh, I outlined a fairly high level faculty hiring plan um, and it was created uh, as a result of many aspects of the strategic plan. There's a roughly one third of the faculty who will be hired in these best in class areas that we're going to determine over the next few months. Uh, one third will, will be in addition to those uh, tenure, tenure track best-in-class hires, another uh, one-third tenure, tenure track hires that help support and recognize the performance of, of our departments as well as help us move forward uh, toward the results of the strategic plan. Um, we also uh, really are looking to, in those best-in-class areas, hire some National Academy-like stature faculty um, and we also will be looking to create some endowed chairs to help with that. Uh, we, uh, we have a plan um, that is flexible enough that it can help us take it, advantage of opportunities. For example, if we find a whole uh, group of faculty in one particular area, we may be able to hire them uh, all together. Uh, or if we find opportunities with a dual career, uh, couples that also can really help us move forward in many, many ways. So the plan is, it's, is an outline, but it, it's flexible enough um, that, that we can capture advantage uh, and um, really uh, make a difference here. Does that answer your question? There's a question back there. That is true, and uh, how are we going to decide those? So, uh, in the plan, it calls for us identifying two of the four um, best-in-class areas this fall, so we can start hiring in those areas, and then the other two in the coming spring. And we already have some some good work that's done uh, along. Uh, toward identifying those best-in-class areas, and I can think of our Blue Sky task, uh, task Force Report and also our Research Capacity Task Force Report and the six areas that we already are strong in as well. So we'll be having conversations, all of us together, to try to identify what those best-in-class areas are. And so I appreciate the question because I want you all to be thinking at a very high level, at a, very, at a multidisciplinary level, what are those great challenges in the world that we are going to be um, front and center in? And, and so I, I need you to be thinking at a very high level because our mission uh, for S&T says that not only are we going to help solve uh, problem, uh, issues and challenges in the state, but we also are going to be helping to address the world's great challenges. And I expect um, that you probably have some ideas along those lines. Yet there'll be an opportunity to share. So look for that information, and I believe that the provost uh, and Krishna as well uh, are working on a, a, a strategy and a timeline uh, to identify those. I'm gonna add one more thing. In terms of the best in class areas, we want to make sure that S&T stands out and, and that um, if anybody is looking at energy, for example, or humanics or whatever areas we determine, that they know S&T is the hub. So there was a question. Hi there. Thanks for your presentation. I really enjoyed it. 
Um, I was curious if you could speak to a little bit about our um, expectations from the system. So as we think more broadly, we think about opportunities within the system, can you speak to those a little bit of how the strength of our university will go with the strength of the other three universities and what President Wolf is, is looking for in terms of an overall vision? That's a good question, Dan. And I think that um, this planning process that we've done on this campus simultaneous with what's happening on the other campuses and the system has really helped us to articulate the value each one of the campuses brings to the system and, and the value that there is in being a part of an overall system. One of the criteria, one of the four criteria in terms of strategic initiative funding is to see um, how can we collaborate with some of the other campuses with, with the system or how can we take what's a success on one campus, say here at S&T, and, and, and move that to the other campuses so that they, they don't have to reinvent the wheel. So share best practices. I think we'll see more and more of that. Um, and frankly, when you look at, at what we have to do uh, to move forward as, as an institution, it's all about partnerships. It's all about strategic partnerships. And those can be within the system as well as outside of the system. So we do actually have some actions this coming year to try to identify specifically how um, we can leverage S&T as Missouri's Technological Research University and use that to help the other campuses in the system and across the state move forward. Question. So the question is, can people still be involved in the strategic planning process? And I expect that you know, but I would say you bet. Uh, and we saw over half of the people in this room stand up. But this is a dynamic plan. So we have people who step forward to be in charge of levers. They're the lever leaders. And we have people who are the owners of specific actions. But we're going to add actions and levers, and we're going to sunset actions and levers if we're not getting the right results. And so there's an opportunity to refresh in terms of what actions we'll be focusing on, and um, uh, also just to take advantage as opportunities arrive. So when I said this is a very dynamic plan, that's what I mean. Um, and, and it will mean that we have great ideas coming forward at, at any time uh, and we'll want to go ahead and be able to um, weigh those uh, and uh, see where they would fit in the priority. So there's plenty of ways to get involved. Uh, one of the ways is to be working with your departments and units as you go through and formulate your plans in a way that will help us move the entire campus plan forward. Another thing that I want to point out is that we have an innovation team that we're in the process of forming. And, and this is a team, they have some funding, about $75,000 annually, uh, and, and they'll be able to provide seed funding for those great ideas that you just want to test out um, that may become very formal actions um, or levers in the plan. But we need a way for quick wins, and we need a way to capitalize on opportunities and so the innovation team is the way to do that. That means if you have a great idea, you have a way to move it in very quickly into the plan and capture attention. And you also have the ways through our actions and levers uh, to make sure that it, uh, it, it is a priority in the plan. So I hope that answers your question. Please be involved because our success depends on your involvement. Yes. Okay, so why have we grown in enrollment uh, in a way that's reversing the trend, certainly that we're seeing in the state, um, but also as we're seeing nationally? Um, I believe that it's a part of the national question about the value of a higher education, the value of, of college. And um, we have some things going for us. Uh, we have the, the fact that, um, that we are relatively affordable 
and we've had a conversation before about this, we want to try to keep, keep that affordability quotient. But in addition, our students have great careers, and they're highly sought after. And, and so that provides that great value that's recognized, you know, not just by students, um, but also by their parents more and more. And what I also think is, is uh, important in our success and why we've seen that over the past few years is that we've had a recruiting message out there that focuses on outcome. And so it, it lets students know what to expect if they come to S&T. We saw some of the rankings uh, and some of that motivation earlier. So um, I think it's the return on investment that we have been uh, focusing attention on. And, and that has reaped, reaped dividends for us. Um, the strategy of return on investment, the strategy of what value we bring as a university is showing up already in terms of the students. Um, so, so when I look at that, I say, okay, that's working for our customer group, for our student customer groups. We need to take that same idea and articulate the added value the return on investment, why you go to S&T and partner with S&T, what you get here that you can't get anywhere else. So with those other customer groups as well, just emphasize that return on investment. And then I have to tell you as well that our students, what our students do and what our alumni do, what our faculty do, um, really is hard to match. Yes. So online learning. Well, I guess I would think of online, it's pretty appropriate that it's coming from you too, Greg. <laughs> yeah. Um, so online learning, I think, is just one aspect of making sure that we're taking advantage of technologies um, to enhance not only our learning, but to enhance our communication and, frankly, to enhance our partnerships. Um, so, you know, our students are really those digital natives. It's the rest of us that are a little slow uh, on the uptake. And I've seen the results uh, of how far students can go if they do have the support of technologies. They uh, are ex very, very curious, and they can go beyond in terms of the learning process um, than they can in the absence of technologies to help that. So I think what I'd like to do is, is to see that we can't shift the conversation. Um, and it's not so much of using uh, online learning as a way um, to increase productivity or uh, just to provide access, but it really is a way to help us um, change the learning paradigm. Because if we are trying to move from the lecture, right, the, the, the person in the front of the classroom lecturing like happens to be happening right now, um, and we take that exact paradigm and we put it online, so now we have a little talking head in a box, that's not taking advantage of the technologies. And that's not where we should be going in terms of online learning. We really need to be focusing on how you use the technologies to better enhance the learning process, to create um, broader access to the renowned expertise, and it doesn't matter where that expertise happens to be. Are there other questions? Is there? I see somebody pointing. Just stand up. I'm sorry, I can't see. Oh, yes, you're right behind the light. So uh, in the strategic plan, there, there's an action that talks about seeing that, that our form follows function. Um, and there are some actions for this coming year that really are looking at particular areas. One of those is an action that calls for a corporate relations office to really help us um, provide um, a, a uh, 
portal or a single focal point for the various ways we interact with corporations. That, that's one piece. And the other piece that we're really looking at uh, this year is in terms of the academic affairs areas. And, and, and since it's so broad ranging, that's why we want to make sure to have uh, larger conversations so that we can talk, uh, talk about the high level changes and then make sure that we have all of the details uh, in place so that we don't miss a beat. So there will be two open forums. I believe one will be Thursday morning and one will be next Monday. And they're gonna, it's going to come out in the e-connections. We also have a number of uh, meetings that are set with some key groups so that we can go uh, in detail in that. So good question. And uh, please come uh, so that we can talk about how these changes and how the structure ties back to the strategic plan. I do want to let you know that, that this is just the beginning. It's not that we're going to make a lot of uh, changes without basis to the plan, but um, we do have an opportunity to be a bit more streamlined uh, and more uh, effective uh, in, in our structure. Other questions? Yes? When are we going to put all these new students at the university? Is there anything we plan about infrastructure? So that is a perfect question and a wonderful segue. So thank you. Um, and, uh, and, and the question is, where are we going to put everybody? We, are, we did delay our campus master plan until after the strategic plan for just that reason. We want to make sure that we have a campus master plan that not only is visionary, but also um, is achievable. And uh, there has been a committee that's been formed and is having its first meeting, Walt, this Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, and uh, that, that committee uh, is representative of people across the campus uh, and they'll be working with our consultants uh, to, to um, determine what our campus uh, could look like, should look like. In addition, at the same time, Joan is, is working with um, university advancement to really set up the foundations for our next comprehensive campaign. And so in February, when we have a sense of what that new campus plan looks like in terms of the physical infrastructure, that will be... Uh, the perfect time to be working with university advancement and determine how we might pace in uh, those developments. So you'll have a chance to be involved. Uh, and, and again, I think it's very, very important that we're able to um, create that uh, environment, that physical environment that allows us uh, to move forward on our plans. So, so we didn't forget about it, but we simply needed to have the strategic plan front and center so that we can make informed decisions about how we go in terms of the, the campus structure. And I guess I, I guess I should point out that that's just an example of how many different plans on this campus are all tying into the strategic plan. So I'd like you all to be thinking of the strategic plan as that umbrella plan and the other plans, whether it's campus master plan or enrollment management plan or academic program plans, that those all feed in to support our success. Other questions? I don't see any other hands up, so I will thank you, and I'll stick around for a little bit in case you want to come on up and ask questions in not so public a way. Thank you so much.